Now streaming. We're on. Okay. okay. Hello, everybody. How um, are we all doing today? Dr. Laura's in the house. Dr. Heather's in the house. We are definitely live. Welcome, welcome. This is Coffee with the Docs. And again, I am Dr. Heather Denniston. And with me today is Dr. Laura Foster. And Dr. Laura Foster has uh, quite a big thing that she's going to share with you today, which I'm excited about. Um, we've got a mishmash, like today is a true mishmash mm. of topics. And we may or may not get to them all, but we are glad to be here. We are glad you are here. We've got five people watching already, which I'm super excited about. And so just a reminder, share this with people who you feel may be um, fulfilled and warmed by the fact we're coming and just having some conversation. It's really what this is about, is a conversation. We would love to have you guys comment and we can kind of respond to that. Let us know what kinds of things you would like to have talked about. Our whole purpose is to come at you and talk about what bubbled up in the last week or so, how things are going in this whole new landscape that we're living in, what's, what's come up for us, because maybe what we're sharing can be helpful to you. Hi, Dr. Laura. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. Uh, I, I get to show up here. As I've said before, you're the technology master. You do all the <laughs> intros. I just show up, say a couple things and then you yes. go back and then you you go to post-production and I'm like this is what it's like this is what people feel like when they have someone who's like working with them I know that would be actually really cool because in in truth that isn't true you do a lot of the pre-production and all of that stuff but uh, we're in episode six so we I mean we're still just trying to figure this thing out <laughs> and uh and so uh I do wonder what it would be like to just come in sit down put on a mic do the show take it off get up and leave and everything else is done for you that would be, That'd very be nice um, yes. nice to see you Nice to see you. Yeah. Very nice to see you. You know, Brent was talking about today, uh, th this article he read on Zoom fatigue and mm -hmm. how I thought it was such an interesting concept because for those of you who are working from home and who have converted all of your meetings to Zoom, the problem with Zoom is that you are not getting the same degree of facial yeah. expression body mechanics. And so your brain is having to work so much harder to interpret what's being said, the tone, the impression, how it's supposed to be landing, that by the end of the day, you're much more exhausted than you would be if you had just been sitting in a meeting. What do you think? Do you think there's some truth to that? I think there's some truth to that. I can really like, even if I just focus on the fact that I've been doing a lot of teaching on yoga on Zoom, let me tell you, well, first of all, I'm a pretty new teacher, so it's hard anyway. <laughs> And second of all, it's much harder to teach on Zoom. So it's like, there's no nuances. That's what that's what Brent's really saying yes. about the article is there's no nuances. So it's just like, I don't know, I'm, I feel I'm a little done with it. So I appreciate yeah. that people are even on here with us because yeah. I, I get that. And as much as, um, I don't know, I'm just kind of done with all of it. I know. We both are. We've been talking about that. Uh, our our sort of our overarching theme today is some stuff from the Brene Brown podcast. And one of the things she talked about is when a typhoon hits, when an earthquake happens, when a natural disaster happens, there's this period of adrenaline where we're like, how can I help you? What do I need to do for myself? What kinds of things do you need? I'm going to help. We're all going to get through this together. And then you come out and that adrenaline is spent and you're just weary. And now you're just looking around going, what the F just happened? And we have to kind of figure out that new landscape. She uses the quote, um, we, can, we can expand into the new normal and still grieve the old normal at the same time. And so that's probably, I don't know if that's a bit of what you're feeling, do you think? It's what I'm feeling. And you and I both really identified that. And I was welcomed into a group last week where I talked about that because you know this, I have a history of long distance endurance sports. And I started doing short distance stuff like sprints and so on. And eventually I got to the point where I was doing like two 250 kilometer races. Um, I don't know what that is in miles, but suffice to say, <laughs> it's a few hours. And I really realized that the mentality and the way I needed to treat myself and um, the direction I had to actually turn the lens was so different when I did short distance stuff or when I did long distance and Brene's stuff really got me thinking about that uh, because if you think about it if you do like a short 5k 
no matter where you are in the landscape of movement, you can recognize that what you need to pull together for a 5k is so different than what you need to pull together for a marathon. Mm. And I would often say to people, you know, you can pretty much get yourself through a 5k, even if you hardly trained, no matter what, you can kind of just bear down the majority of people would get through and what you could even maybe not drink water, you wouldn't have to take any nutrition in, you would be a mess at the end, but you would get through and you see that with people, I think, who are in crisis, oftentimes you can, especially when you talk about the crisis of a loved one dying or something like that, you can see where people just kind of put themselves on the back burner to get themselves to the other side. And then mm-hmm. you can see that when, you know, the fun- funeral passes and things like that, you can just feel in your heart that now the work begins for them. Mm-hmm. That's how I think of that. But when I think of something like a marathon or beyond, you can't get to the finish line if along the way you don't turn the lens inward and, and ask yourself on the regular, what do I need? Where am I at? you know, in the case of a marathon, Mm -hmm. you'd be like, do I need to take nutrition? Do I need to drink water? Why is my stomach upset? Do I need to slow down? Do I need to speed up? Mm -hmm. And as much as that sounds so funny, that's what this feels like. This, Mm -hmm. this is a marathon, you know, and I don't know where the finish line is, but I do know that if we don't shift that perspective, it feels like, and just really put it back on us, Mm -hmm. we won't get to this end, or we won't be the person that we want to be when we get to the end, or you know, yeah. what I mean? you don't want that to be what you would call your new normal. Yeah, I think in, in that regard, as you were talking about, I was thinking, oh, and you know what else for a 5k, you're either at the beginning, or you're either at the beginning, near the beginning, or near the end. Mm-hmm. With a marathon with endurance, when you're in the middle, you neither see the beginning or see the end, you're in the middle of it. And it's kind of like being at ocean, you know, at the, on, on the sea, where you can't see land on either side but you have to do everything you can to keep yourself moving in the right direction. And so, yeah. And so I think you and I were talking a little bit before about this idea of turning the lens inward and also connecting with, we've just dumped all this adrenaline. We've just, you know, kind of been through this, but we, we can't keep everything on hold. Like, goals and aspirations and things you wanted to change. I have friends who have held off moving, held off finishing doing this or that. And part of me is thinking, no, we have to start moving forward again. What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I feel that way. And I had a shout out online today to a person in my life who is really modeling to me what it means to stay in that space of openness and expansion when mm-hmm. a lot of around me feels like it's contracting. And mm-hmm. my first four, what are we, week 112, <laughs> yes. whatever, recently, it switched for me. I went from being kind of like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm doing what I need to be doing. And you were a little more goal-driven. I could feel that. Yes. Yet. But I was like, shoring up what I need to shore up. And now I'm like, okay, I have to, I have to start expressing some stuff. I need to move yeah. forward. And you know, I know you might laugh at that because you know I've made some particularly large decisions in the last little bit. I don't know why those, I'm not counting those, but like yeah. <laughs> that that's the trickiness. It's like, you kind of got to find your footing, what you're okay with. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, the decisions and let's, let's go into that, but I think that those decisions were you going, okay, I need to open this door. And to open that door, you had to do what you did this week. Can you share with us what you did? Yeah. Well, this last week, um, for those who are just hopping on our Coffee with the Doc train, uh, both of us are chiropractors. That's how we initially met in and around chiropractic quite a few years ago. And uh, (laughs) both of us have been in practice for 20 plus years. And Mm -hmm. I just recently decided to retire my chiropractic license. Mm -hmm. And it was this isn't so much right now in this particular moment, a discussion about why I did that in terms of like the narrative, Mm -hmm. but the reason that I did it for the bigger reason is that it felt like the right thing to do. And I know a lot of times when we get information that bubbles up and we can tell there's a decision that needs to be made or we Mm -hmm. feel compelled academically, I can tell you academically, I would not have retired my license. It was Mm -hmm. a gut feeling. It's where I can go the way I want to go with the words that I want to use that I couldn't do Mm -hmm. when I was restricted by my license. 
that's here nor there, but I, it was just, it was for me, it was all gut. Yeah. And, and I think that. I love that. And I think that's one of the things that you just are so enlightened about helping other people get to is listening to that. And in this time where we are weary, um, sometimes it's easy to just kind of crawl into bed and put the pillow over. Uh, But I think this is just a very sweet spot in our lives where we can really dig into that. And sometimes make those very tough decisions. Sometimes it's in the end, the decision actually having on the other side of it, you're like, oh gosh, that actually wasn't that hard. It was just doing it. So one of our challenges for you guys this week is to really listen and think about anything that has come up for you, a decision that needs to be made, a goal that needs to be set, some action that needs to be put forth in your life. Um, It's a very, very good time to be doing that right now. Yeah, yeah. And and there seems to be a, you know, because the busyness on some levels has, or the noise has slowed down or quieted Mm -hmm. down, Mm -hmm. you know, there's the opportunity there that more than anything. And I really think that, you know, when we, the angst of decision-making comes in the lead up to the decision. Yes. It never comes afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, you stay up at night worrying about the decisions you haven't made, not about the ones that you have made. Like you would have it was, I was so dramatic about the whole thing. I mean, I reached out to you. I reached out. I was like so dramatic. I had my own dialogue around it. It was, I I was kind of pathetic to myself even. And you also, I have to say you reached out to people you believed in and respected to seek some guidance from them. Not, and I'm not referring to myself. I'm referring to a couple other people you called. Mm -hmm. Um, and I loved that. So kind of along the decision-making path, you're like, I need somebody to speak into my life about this. So keep going. Well, and that, and I want to say that true. And because sometimes we do that, we abdicate our decision to someone else. I want to be clear. That's not what I did. Yes. I got mentorship, which you and I, of course, we're both coaches. So we get this. Uh, and neither, uh, all three of them didn't tell me what to do, but they all gave me a perspective and I just weighed in. And then at the end of the day, like I almost always do, I just did what I want to do anyways, but I did it with a, with a sort of a broader perspective. So yeah. I, I agree. I think this is a really great time. And if all the people around you seem to be contracting, but you just have this pull to make a decision or or pull the trigger on something, or just really acknowledging that something no longer fits, I would say, yes, that's great homework to do this week. I wrote a blog post a million years ago. Uh, It's about spring. It had a catchy title, which I can't remember right now. Uh, But it was, I was out on a walk in Calgary at my sister's house and spring had definitely sprung. There were crocuses, there were birds chirping. That was just, and I was just, just, I was just, there was just a thing. And I, and I got to thinking about how springtime, regardless of what else is going on, there is an energy that percolates up in us of creativity, of ideas, of energy. And I love that time of year so much because it, it's like a, a tailwind just pushing you forward into mm. things that you can create and do. And I love that because it's not just the plants and not just the birds, but it's us that spring bubbles up in as well. And that is now. And even though we are in this big thing that is very, very different for all of us, that's still true. And so I think that's something to listen to as well. Yeah. Yeah. I do. And I love this. I don't know. I think everyone can see it in the background. There's a mirror with a whole bunch of post-it notes. Yeah. Yes. First of all, for those who don't know, that's how Heather creates content for herself, presentations and things like that. But I, but I picked up some post-it notes for the very same reason is I think if you have something percolating, how wonderful is it for you to take, you know what I'm going to say, a Sharpie. Yes. (laughs) Because that's the only way that's I'm creative. Yeah. That's my thing. Write on a Sharpie on a really nice colored post-it note. Yeah. And just a thought and an action, a knowing, a snippet of piece of information. Like that is a great way to connect to what's true for you. I had a coach that said once, and it has resonated with me ever since, she said, well, that the preceding quote is that brains are for ideas, not storage. And her thing was take the post-it notes and get out those surface little snippets so that you can get down to the deeper stuff. Cause that deeper stuff is not going to come up until you 
get rid of the, the the initial stuff that might even not seem to like make sense or matter if you're if you're planning a decision or you're goal setting for whatever reason or you're writing something or whatever it is sometimes those initial throwaway things they end up being very useful but sometimes they are throwaway and then you get to the meat and so i i love that idea because i'm very forgetful so it works for my story that brains are for ideas not storage because i forget a lot of things um but in, in regard to those post-its, that's my brain dump is just getting rid of a lot of that, the surface stuff I know I want to say so I can get down to the stuff I need to say. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. So. And thank you for that because that's really, that's been instrumental for me. Oh, well, thank you. Thank Works you. Works so much better than this. <laughs> Everybody has their process, Laura. Everybody has their process. Oh, we have lots of people on here. We have 19. Hi, Rhonda yeah. and Nicole and Anne and Lizzie's watching. And a few other people, Janet and Jane. Hi, everybody. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Nice to Welcome. Feel free to comment or otherwise. Um, Please do. So um, where are can we? I do, can I do your quote? Can I do your quote from your Instagram story today? Because yeah. I have not stopped thinking about it. Okay. So I'm going to read it. And that may lead us into a little discussion about empathy, because mm. that was something we wanted to chat about today. So uh, Dr. Laura is on Instagram as uh, soul inspired G-U-R-L girl and go find her because she does great stories. I always get very inspired by her stories and usually I steal some of the content. And uh, <laughs> so uh, she is really, really great. And I say that jokingly because she and I share resources on a regular basis. Um, her quote today, and maybe you can tell me, I couldn't figure out quite who, well, I did see who, who posted it, but I don't know that person. So the quote was, in your search for connection during this isolating time, be careful not to over identify with suffering that isn't yours. Empathy is a beautiful thing. Digesting and internalizing others is self harm. Uh, and so that to me, I just went, oh my gosh, because I'm in conversation with so many people who A, are downplaying their own suffering because they are um, comparing mm. other suffering with their own and somehow they don't score right on the suffering chart. And so they say mine's not worth it because theirs is worse, which is a terrible idea. And then the second thing is ruminating maybe too much to the point of self-harm, of over-identifying with suffering that isn't there. So I would love for you to share when you posted that, what were you thinking? I was thinking about sugar scrub. Sugar scrub. Tell me more I about was, that. I was thinking about the fact that words matter. And mm -hmm. I loved, I didn't, uh, cause probably most people haven't seen it, if not all, I didn't write it. That was a repost, as you said. Yeah. And so what I loved was that idea that you are just aware that there's a line there and then it goes from being empathetic mm -hmm. to it really being dangerous or unhealthy for you. Mm -hmm. And I can see it in other people. It's cause it's always easier to see in other people. Mm -hmm. I can see where that's really easy to cross over. And because I work with people hands-on, hands-off constantly, I very empathetic as you are, I'm sure, mm -hmm. as I know about you. And, and so I pull on people's energy all the time, which is one of the reasons I've been so tired right now, mm -hmm. just so tired. So I'm aware it's an issue for me. And mm -hmm. um, every single day when I go in the bathroom into the shower, which, okay, let's be honest, I don't shower every day right now. But when I do go in the shower, I have been using sugar scrub. I make it myself. It's coconut oil. You can just find recipes online, coconut oil, white sugar, and some essential oils. And I love it because obviously it acts like a loofah, but it's moisturizing, but it's an energetic dump too. I don't know if you ever know this about this, <gasps> but sugar scrub or something like that. Um, I absolutely feel, and it was a recommendation um, for me by an energy worker to help me release energy that comes from other people so there's the there's this the side where we're acknowledging just simply acknowledging that you have to kind of check yourself be careful because we want to be empathetic we want to be helpful and we want to be supportive mm -hmm. but if we do it at the expense of ourselves you're of no help and this is mm -hmm. the long game versus the short game situation that we were talking about this is the marathon versus the sprint mm -hmm. this is the oh my god i have to get groceries in my house and where's the toilet paper to now what am i doing mm -hmm. that's the difference but I'm telling you, like, it's funny. I just give you this little thing about sugar scrub, but it's a wee little thing that I, 
whether it actually does that or not, I don't know, but it makes me feel like a million bucks so much so that I've turned everybody else in my family onto it. And I'm now making these giant containers and awesome. everyone does it because we all feel this, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. What about do. you? What, what, well, what in that quote sparked for you? I think it was the, it, it was, I hadn't in words considered that you know, empathy also can be over that there is that fine line, like you said, mm -hmm. and that I think we, if we're in tune, we can feel it in our bodies when we've over identified, when we're taking on too much, when we can't get it out of our head, when um, we're feeling just so, so heavy. And so I think I love the sugar scrub idea, certainly alone time, meditation, yoga, all of those things movement. are great. Yeah, movement. Wedding. Yeah, I, I was listening to somebody else talking about how m movement is wonderful for all of the normal reasons, but it is one of the only ways to access your anxiety and depression and tense energy and all of those things. And so there's so many benefits to that, uh, for that. May I just say, by the way, I'm doing a shout out for the Jump Rope for Women group on Facebook. We went from 20 members to 160 members in about two weeks. Whoa. People, yeah, well, and I, I only say that because I am getting so excited about the fact that people are making the switch at home and going, oh, Orange Theory is not opening next week. I've got to figure this thing yeah. out. And so I love that people are starting to figure out movement modalities that they can do at home. And Laura, uh, somebody asked me literally right before this show, what, what is the schedule for your yoga classes? Are they certain mornings? Are they whenever? Are they, how do they? Yes. Yes. They're that. <laughs> <laughs> they're, you know, fluid. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's a good um, practice. They're typically Tuesdays and Saturdays, although I didn't make that as a guaranteed date. I post okay. them uh, on my Facebook account and I post them on my Insta stories. Okay, um, great. And uh, I have a, um, 250 women that are on and one awesome. lone brave man who are on my, um, my feed, my list, people who have asked to be added so that I send out an email. So yeah. you can message me here and I will do that. But uh, in my bio of my Instagram account, is where I always post the links. Okay. So great. I know that that sounds like really that's how you run a business. It's not a business. It's a connection. It's like yeah. my love language, just like jump rope is. Same. Yeah. Jump rope is not a business. It's just a connection opportunity. Yeah. And, and I don't charge for it currently uh, yeah. in this, in this um, forecast right now. So yeah. yeah, that's how I do it. So I don't put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure I'm here X, Y, and Z because the second big decision I made currently is that I'm moving across Canada in talk two weeks. And so there's nothing to talk about. It's just another example of like going with your gut feeling of what- But I, there, there is something I wanna talk about about that. Um, okay. Two things. One is, what did you buy recently so that you could show up well in your new small town? Oh, <laughs> you're such a bag. <laughs> I bought myself a big four-door truck. I can grill. just see it. It has a big grill and big everything. Big grill. Oh yeah. And it's like you have a bar and you have to put your foot on and you have to get in. Okay. That's Fine. so awesome. <laughs> uh, Laura is moving to a town where my mother lived for a long time. I lived there briefly and it is a lovely small town in BC. Uh, can I share the name of where you're going? Yes. I'm moving to Kelowna. Kelowna. <laughs> and, uh, and so she's got her Kelowna truck. The other thing I wanted to mention in regard to the move was this, and maybe there's nothing to say about it, but I caught it and I wanted to bring it up. And that was okay. you announced you were moving and then there was a statement after that and I can't remember if it was on stories or Facebook and you said hey it's okay I'm going to be coming back to Toronto I'm not leaving you was there kind of some like ah, don't go was there some was there some angst around that or can you share a little bit about like what happened with your followers and kind of how that mm. felt and I think I, I like you, I have such a strong appreciation for the people that we work with in person mm -hmm. or online or whatever. And I just hadn't had an opportunity to talk to some key people. You know, obviously my inner core knew yes. and, and I was filtering it out. For some reason it, I just kind of announced it probably because I gave myself about three and a half weeks to move. Yeah. Um, and so there was just some initial, oh no. And then all I wanted to say was, it's okay. We're keeping a place here in Toronto. Yes. We're going to be going back and forth 
we'll be here quite a bit next year. I have events already lined up. So it's good. It's like, I, I am moving. I feel it in my soul, all the most important stuff going to Kelowna, but I am keeping, you know, I'm keeping yeah. my, part of my heart here in Ontario, as much as I'm a BC girl. Um, you know, I, I just, I've been here for a long time and there's some really important people here. You probably feel the same way. Oh, you know, yeah. You've been in, you've been in the Seattle, Washington area for so many years. And yet you have a second home in, yeah. in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. And so you probably get a little bit of that. Yeah, I do. And I, I also think it's kind of like one, the, 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 a big change up and this is a big change up for you. We've yeah. just, we're going through a big change up. I think shaking things up uh, just creates so much energy and opportunity and new things. And I, I get super excited about that, but I know some people have a very hard time with that kind of change and it, it um, disrupts them, you know, and so we need to be sensitive to that. It reminds me of when we both left uh, formal brick and mortar practice is you yeah. had patients who were like, see ya, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Um, and then, and those were the ones you were like, oh, geez, I thought you'd actually really miss me. And then there were, the, there were the ones that were quiet and they'd been with you for a long time and you thought, oh, that'd be all right. And they break down bawling in your lobby um, as you're doing your last day. And I think you had that experience as well. And so I think that's another empathy thing is that this is such big change for everybody right now. And all of us deal with it so differently. Um, and to just have sensitivity and, and empathy toward that, um, both for those going through the change yeah. and for those of us who are having a hard time with the change. So, and just think- trusting to trust. There's a part in here where we just have to trust that we know what's right for us. Trust yeah. that we know when it will feel right to expand more trust Mm -hmm. when you'll be ready to say I'm no longer doing this or yes to that or Mm -hmm. whatever that is like just there's no right time there's no wrong time there's your time and so what might look right for me and what might like right for you isn't right for somebody else and I know that we get that academically but when Mm -hmm. you take that in with yourself you realize you're in a one person race and you're the only person in the lane and Mm -hmm. I find that so comforting I remind myself of that often because although to other people, I sometimes get told, oh, you're so good at making decisions and you always follow your heart. And I'm like, listen, this stuff is hard for me too. It's just, Mm -hmm. I have been in the place where I'm not listening. I've Mm -hmm. been in the place where I created a life that might've looked good and was more than I ever imagined having, but didn't feel right for me. So mm-hmm. I, I struggle too. And all I try and do is just share, share what I know, or I don't know, live mm-hmm. my life and do it with kind of uh, language and talk about it in hopes mm-hmm. that that gives someone else permission to live their life the way they want to, too. I love that. And yeah. that's, that's exactly what you do. And I love that. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Yeah. What's on there. You were talking to me about resources. Oh yeah. So I was thinking like, I have been using some things this in these last few weeks that we, you and I have not talked about or shared. And some of the stuff is sort of U S specific. And, um, so I know Laura has one or two things that she's going to share that, um, if you can't have access to some of the things I'm talking about, there are some good resources and the kind of the, the umbrella is, uh, wellness resorts, resources to support you while you're home. And so what I started doing with the junk show last week, so for those of the, you that don't know, I produced a show called the Junk You Should Know Show. It's on Fridays right here on the Well Fit and Fed channel at noon PST. And I started last week with my first interview of healthy options for being at home right now. And the first I interviewed was a company called Custom Plate out of Seattle who uh, caters to every kind of um, preference from a food standpoint. So paleo, keto, vegan, AIP, which is anti-inflammatory protocol. They are holistic chefs. They deliver, they use packaging. And, uh, so I want to start to get some of those resources out to my local community. Um, and I thought, Hey, well, let's share a couple. And so the couple that I thought of, do you guys have thrive market online there? Do you know, Laura? I don't, think so yeah and if we so, do yeah it is based out of the states right yeah so the 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 three that I recommend for you guys if you are looking for some options especially for those of you who are really trying to limit how often you're going to the grocery store thrive market uh and butcher box 
and Vitacost. And I actually think Vitacost is out of Canada, right? I, I have shopped there. So yeah, you know, that's the thing about Canadians. We kind of are used to <laughs> getting stuff from the states <laughs> yeah and, and Vita, the vita yeah they ship to canada that's awesome vita cost is you would think it's just supplements but it's not it's yeah. all sorts of food items and different uh, holistic wellness oriented oriented items so thrive market vita cost and butcher box butcher box a little limited on taking new members right now they're a bit overwhelmed butcher mm. box is grass-fed um well-sourced meats that come monthly um but i know there's other ones out there and then for products for like skincare and all that stuff uh, a canadian company called the detox market is one of my absolute favorites um of what you can get online do you have any that you wanted to share dr laura yeah, so the equivalent to Butcher Box in Canada is called True Local, T R U Local. Oh, excellent. Um, you can order them weekly, bi weekly, monthly, and set up that same kind of same thing. Um, and they have some very traditional foods in there, but then they also have grass fed, organic, that kind awesome. of stuff. Um, Stubborn Farmer is also a local Toronto area uh, farm, and oh, cool. they they have not only their own chickens and their own um, meat and so on, but they also do a lot of greenhouse growing. And in the summer, of course, all their stuff is really fresh. They're fantastic. What a great company. Uh, they encourage people to come visit. They, they have such great stuff. I also recommend the detox market, but I also, um, in Toronto area, we have four locations of something called uh, Nature's Emporium, mm. which is kind of like if you imagine Whole Foods, but for Canada, it is a kick butt oh my goodness, what an incredible company. And what I would say to people is those are the companies that if you are shopping locally or in, in for example, with Nature's Emporium, you can go online, I can order a day and a half later, I can just pull up to the curb, they put my groceries in the back of my car and away I go, you can do that with them. They're amazing that way. And they That's are great. a full service place. Um, what I love about them though, is that for like in specific with this one is they are local. What's great. It feels good when you can to support locally. Yes. Uh, you know, they're not one of the big corporations and I'm not anti-corporation, but they're not one of the big corporations. These are people who are employing people locally and keeping it in the area, but yeah. they are feeling it and you see the extra mile with them. Mm -hmm. I really noticed that, which I think is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and I see people lined up in the traditional grocery stores but then I, if you can find some of these other places, you can really make a difference in your local community, which to yeah. me feels really good. So yeah. I know we're all in different size communities. We're in different places. Yes. We all have different price points. I get it. It's all different, but I guess it's just those things that you're talking about online fully back up. Those are the ones I would recommend. Yeah. And I, I would just want to reiterate that. So, um, we know that we want to, the encouragement is to, you know, limit your shopping as much as possible but if you can go to the butcher shop that's local and like laura's saying help support that person who is doing their best to stay open do it do it is what i say do it kathy said stubborn farmers at capacity well that's a that's a good thing yeah i mean not at a capacity if you want to order from yes that, but yes. It, makes, it warms my heart because um I don't know. You really see that all of this creates clarity. Mm -hmm. You just really recognize how a business treats their consumers, how they treat their own employees, all of those things. I'm telling you, I'm noticing. I'm yes. Note. And I am like an elephant. It bugs Paul because if I feel like a business does not behave ethically, I will never do, do we business need, with them. Do we need <laughs> to share the, can we share the appliance story as a closing <laughs> oh come on okay we don't have to just know that uh if you were in that store on that day there would be no doubt in your mind that laura was displeased with her service <laughs> running after the, yeah, yeah. the flip uh, side no. of it is is that you know where you spend your money counts and yes I think it does this is, this is a great opportunity to just notice what you notice i think that when businesses are ethical right now and they they just behave the right way and the right yes. way. Is different. That's your own uh, filter for that one. But when someone behaves the right way, you notice, remember that yeah. when, when we're, we're able to kind of make that huge choice again, just remember. 
I yeah. think that's important. I'm with you too on that. And I've definitely been on both sides of that coin as well. Um, for sure. So, and we do notice it more and more right now is how yeah. people are showing up for sure. That's all I got. That's all I got. Can I ask you, um, you're so good that I get to the end of these interviews and I realize that, that you flip it. So I feel like I'm doing all the talking. So I want to ask you a question. Okay. Um, for you right now, mm. do you have a couple things that are making you feel the way you need to feel right now? Because I know we've mentioned things in the past, but it changes mm -hmm. all the time because I am not the same person I was this morning or yesterday. So I yeah, have to be constantly. So do you have something that's like keeping yeah. you? Something I'm, you're reading, something you're a habit. What do you have? I'll share uh, one thing that just came to mind immediately. So it tells me that's probably what I'm supposed to share. And that is I have a, an on again, off again, not on again, off again. I have an ongoing chronic pain condition that is well under control and in, I'm in very good shape uh, in that regard. But I have spent many, many years in severe, severe pain. And when I first got married, Brent is somebody who's, I don't even know if he's really ever, I, when I knew him, he has since, but never really a big injury, nothing that really hurt. And so empathizing and kind of understanding where I was at was really hard for him. So much so that I would just finish sharing with him like, oh my gosh, my SI joint is in so much pain. I can hardly walk, it hurts so bad. And then I'd sit down on the couch and I'd go to get up and I'd go, oh, and he'd go, oh, what's wrong? And I'd be like, really? And it was a thing. And so mm -hmm. we- Understandably. Learned, yes. <laughs> So we learned early on in our marriage that we found a way to communicate about it. And he learned to say to me, what's your number? And I would say, it's an eight. And he would know, oh, eight's bad. I'm going to, hey, can I run you a bath? Can I do this? Mm. Uh, if I'm a one or a two, let's go for a hike. He knew how to read off that with just saying one number instead of me having to like go on and on about it and then being frustrated mm. that he didn't hear me. So the reason I'm mentioning this is I think we're in a time right now where if you are living with people, which many of us are, if you are living with people, it's starting to get tight quarters, we're tired, uh, we're weary, and you could use that number system to let the people in your family know where you're at and mm. use it as a family way of gauging how are you feeling today? What's your energy level? How are you? Sadness? Mm. What what number are you? And um, that's my that's my parting gift is to maybe start to employ that in your family. Um, Brene Brown calls it the 50-50 rule or the family gap uh, rule in their household. Um, that's a, a great uh, podcast to listen to. That's the one yeah. on comparative suffering. Um, and so she talks about it in a slightly different way, but just leaving just to say you know what it's and some of us it's really hard to articulate how we're feeling but we can kind of come up with a number so um that might be something that people could use that i'm using i love that i have to say i love that and i did listen to that podcast episode um it's kind of like you're saying what's your capacity today yeah right yeah like, what's your capacity and yeah yeah, I know that I check in just based on Paul's body language or the kid's body language or how they're talking to me, but how much easier would it be if you just actually asked? <laughs> <laughs> fair, en fair enough. But you, you so happen good. to be exceptionally intuitive. Some of us are not so much. And uh, so the number game uh, can be That's a little good. helpful tool um, to, to talk. And then it can start a conversation too. Like, okay, yeah. you're an eight. What? Tell me a little bit more about that. What does that look like for you? It kind of opens the gate. Amazing. So good. Well, listen, you guys, we, uh, we have had 16 or 17 of you with us the whole show, which is just fantastic. Please uh, share this with friends or family who you think might benefit. We will be back here again next Monday at 1130 PST, 230 EST. When do you move? Two weeks today, so we'll have to talk about that. that yeah, day. we'll figure that out. We at some point are going to be coming to you from Kelowna. Yes, um, we yeah, which is great. So, guys, be safe out there. Stay well, most importantly, and um, and reach out to either Dr. Laura or myself on Instagram if you have follow up questions, if you have concerns, if you need any support, we can help you with that. So, um, any parting things no. there? Okay. So much appreciation. Oh. That's all. That's all. Me I got. too. Me too. Yeah. Okay. You guys, uh, I am signing off and we will see you again next week. Goodbye.